Sometime between 16 and 1500 BCE, the volcanic eruption on Thera rattled the Menon civilization to its core, erasing from the existence the Menon palace center of Akrotiri together with much of the island. The surrounding Kikladic islands, which represented the key component of the Minon trade network, were devastated, and the powerful Cretan fleet that dominated the Aegean Sea was no more. Unlike several centuries ago when the Minoans were able to quickly recover from a natural disaster in the absence of an external enemy, this time another power was on the rise on the Greek mainland, centered around the city of Mycenae and eager to take advantage of the Minoan decline. Ever since the establishment of the new palace period on Crete, the Minoan civilization had dominated the Aegean Sea culturally and economically, heavily profiting from both long-distance trade as well as the Aegean commercial network that included the Aegean islands, coastal Asia Minor and the mainland Greece. However, Unlike the Kikladis and the Asia Minor coast where the Minoans also projected their political power through their colonies, the Greek mainland was not a part of the Cretan palatial system. The mainland Greeks, mainly those belonging to a tribe known as the Achaeans, had established themselves on the Peloponnese and the regions of Argolis, Laconia and Messenia, and although heavily influenced by Crete culturally, managed to develop their society based on the Menon palaces and yet independent of the Menon authority. The Achaeans established their own palace centers based around the capital city of Mycenae as well as other major centers such as Tiryns, Pylos and later Thebes. Originally a viable trading partners of the Minoans, the Mycenaeans utilized on the long-distance trade as well, with their pottery reaching the coastal sites of Western Asia Minor, but also Cyprus, Levant and even Egypt. Thus, the Mycenaean centers managed to achieve significant prosperity and wealth themselves, and by 1500 BCE came to dominate much of the southern Greek mainland. However, Unlike the Minoans, who had exercised a relatively peaceful hegemony based on sea trade and commerce, the Mycenaeans were a warrior society, where kings and heroes earned their glory by war and conquest. As the Mycenaean influence and power spread across Greece during the 15th century BCE, it became clear that the clash between the two powers was inevitable. Due to the absence of the deciphered contemporary records, it is difficult to make an exact conclusion on the events that followed. What we do know is that much like their rivals, the Mycenaeans were renowned seafarers and were more than willing to expand at the expense of the declining Minoans.
It is unknown if there was an internal political turbulence on Crete at the time, or the Minoans just weren't able to maintain the firm control over their Aegean possessions and dependencies, but either way, the Mycenaean influence started to gradually replace the influence of Crete throughout the Aegean Sea. The island of Kythera was likely among the first to fall into the Mycenaean political sphere, with the Achaean settlers arriving in the following decades. Similar fate happened to many other islands, including the Cyclades, and it was clear at this point that even Crete itself would be vulnerable to the Mycenaean invasion. On the island of Crete, the capital city of Knossos was still the most powerful and influential palace center, still capable of fighting off any direct invasion from the sea. The rest of the island, however, was likely left lightly protected and thus unable to resist the Mycenaean invaders. The far west of the island was inhabited by the Kidonis, the autochthonous tribe different from the Ethiocretan Minoans, whose unconditional allegiance to Knossos was likely not guaranteed at the time of the Minoan weakness. This, as well as any other potential instability, was certainly to be used by the Mycenaeans, who were finally ready to make a move against the declining Thalassocracy of Crete. At around 1450 BCE, the Mycenaean sea invasion was launched against the Cretan island. According to the archaeological evidence, the Mycenaeans did not initially strike directly against Knossos, but rather used the unprotected coastal space between Kidonia and Knossos to land, and then proceeded through the nearby valley southwards against the city of Phaistos. In the subsequent battle, the Minoan defenders proved to be no match for the Mycenaean army, who scored a decisive victory and the palace center of Phaistos was destroyed. The Achaeans likely based themselves around the nearby settlement, known under its modern name Hagia Triada, and soon proceeded forward against the rest of the Minoan palaces. In quick succession, the centers at Malia, Gurnia and Zakros were all attacked and destroyed, together with a number of smaller Cretan centers. Finally, the time had come for the main prize, the capital city of Knossos. The Minoans were now put in an impossible situation, having to defend against several paths to the city as well as from a possible attack coming from the sea. The capital city of Knossos, the wealthiest and the most powerful palace center on Crete, ultimately fell to the Mycenaean army. While the city itself was not destroyed like the rest of the Minoan centers, its fall completed the Mycenaean conquest of Crete and the end of the Minoan civilization. Although we do not know the names of the kings and military leaders involved in this war, the subsequent Greek oral tradition and mythology record a prince named Tectamos or Texaphos, who was credited with the conquest of Crete, leading an Achaean expedition from Aeolus, supplied with the contingents of Dorians and Pelasgians. The reigning ruler of the Ethiocretans, an eponymous king called Cress in the mythological accounts, was thus defeated and replaced by Tectamos himself signifying the Achaean takeover and the arrival of the new settlers. From 1450 BCE, we enter the period of Mycenaean Crete, where the city of Knossos would continue to be the capital of the island, but as a Mycenaean rather than a Minoan palace. The Minoan culture and legacy, however, would not perish, as it continued to exercise great influence and became an integral part of the Mycenaean society. 
the Minoans themselves, known from this point on as the Ethiocretans, meaning the true Cretans, would continue to be a part of the Cretan society, even with a certain degrees of autonomy in some cases, but that's a story for one of the next episodes of the Minoan history. Please consider subscribing and sharing the video as this is a one person production and it greatly helps the visibility of the channel. Special thanks to History with Sai, Nico, Panayotis Yanopoulos, Fred Lecky and the State Care for their continuous support. If you wish to become a Patreon member, please click the link in the video description. This was 1XTV and we'll see you again soon.